day. And pay attention to this, because this is a very fascinating thing I've noticed recently. People think they are, they're under this illusion that we are more free in society because of the acceptance of things like gay marriage. They think that suddenly we're very, very free and open and just there's so much liberty going around. But <laughs> they think because we have 31 genders now legally recognized in New York, that's a thing, that, that we are more free. The reality is that while we are focusing on things like gay marriage, laws to restrict our speech, your privacy, to funnel your taxes out of your wallet, are all being passed and discussed by the government, and we are just distracted. And the even sadder part about it is that people don't need the state to recognize their damn marriage. You could have got fucking married anyway. Fuck the state. You can do it. <laughs> People don't need the state to pretend to be omnigender or whatever they want. And I sure as hell do not need the state to tell me what to call them. Because to live, to truly live, is to experience disagreement, to experience pushback towards your ideas, to not always have others say what you want, but to be able to say what you want and what you will without being monitored or fine-tuned by others. American trial lawyer Gary Spence put it like this. The true test of liberty is the right to test it, the right to question it, the right to speak to my neighbors, to grab them by the shoulders and look into their eyes and ask, are we free? I have thought that if we are free, the answer cannot hurt us. And if we are not free, must we not hear that answer? I fear that the day is coming upon us in many ways, certainly in Canada and definitely in Europe, that we may not be allowed to ask these questions. America seems to have dodged somewhat of a bullet uh, on that front by electing a man who is tearing up the elites, but the institutions still stand. At the University of Berkeley, they have something called a free speech circle. How fucking sad is this? How fucking sad? <laughs> this tiny little space where you can stand on, you are allowed to say your thoughts, you are allowed to be honest, you are allowed to question authority, you are allowed to be true to yourself, but only in this small little space. Only if you walk into that circle on campus. Gone are the days where universities filled up with men hungry for knowledge and hungry for the debate and disagreement. Gone are the days where asking questions and challenging authority was a moral imperative. Now, we have small little circles on our campuses where people are allowed to peep those things. To some, it may seem like I might be exaggerating or cherry-picking just a few extreme cases, but even so, even if that is the case, freedom is not free. We have to defend it. If we do not exercise our rights, we will watch them slowly disappear or even worse, we will forget they ever existed in the first place, as many among my generation have. And they truly see free speech as a dangerous thing. If you look at this, more and more people are getting further and further away from the idea of free speech. So that is 40% of millennials that think that the government should be able to prevent what we say. Free speech is a relic to my generation. We have to always be on guard. Because every day the government are working to take away more of the people's power. That's just a fact. I probably don't have to <laughs> preach that here too much. We all know that the government can only feel comfortable in their power if they gain more to preserve the power that they already have. Now, speaking of government overreach and control, right now in Canada, we have probably some of the biggest issues with free speech, um, maybe just next to Europe. Uh, sorry, I mean in the West, that is, of course. Uh, but before I get into talking about some of these laws that are being passed in Canada, I have a question for someone in the crowd, maybe just someone in the front here. Can I ask you? Okay. What gender am I? <laughs> female. Female? All right. Oh, okay. He said female. Um, I am actually legally a man in Canada. <laughs> so... I'm not, I'm not screwing with you, it's on, it's on Wikipedia, so it must be true. <laughs> so I switched my gender legally to see how easy it was, and I am a dude, so to all of you people that make the sexual comments on YouTube, you're gay, you're all gay, okay? <laughs> anyway.
there is. We, we've got a bill in Canada right now going through its second reading in the Senate, and it is Bill C-16, and it mandates that you refer to me as a man. Doesn't matter how much makeup I'm wearing, doesn't matter how high my heels are, doesn't matter how long my hair is, oh, speaking of. <laughs> you have to call me a man. And it goes beyond just male and female as well. It is basically whatever you want to be. If someone decides that they are, for example, let's pick a, let's pick a fun gender from Tumblr, Biloxi gender. <laughs> a fluid gender which moves too quickly for the owner to be able to identify what gender they are at any given time. <laughs> Good luck with that one, guys. <laughs> I think with this one, though, you may have a chance to stay out of legal trouble simply because the person has no idea what the hell gender they are either, so <laughs> I don't know if they can sue you under Bill C-16. But uh, I got another one for you, just wait for it. Buran gender. A gender that seems to shift and change the moment it is identified. <laughs> Basically, you're screwed. Can you imagine that conversation? Hello, ma'am. Oh, it's sir. Oh, sir? No, 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 it's ma'am. Basically, you're going to jail. Like, sorry. <laughs> so this stuff may sound pretty crazy to you, um, but the situation with me, where I am a man, that is totally a realistic thing that could happen, and you would be under pressure of legal threat to call me male. If you refuse to state something that is clearly untrue, you will be punished by the government for it. Think about that. They're not just telling you what not to say anymore. They are telling you what to say. Professor Jordan Peterson from the University of Toronto has done some excellent work on exposing this bill. And one of the things that he stated in his first interview about Bill C-16 uh, was that this bill is being rushed into law because people are not paying attention. And it's totally true. The majority of people, they aren't paying attention. We as a populist in the West do not keep our governments in check. It's not entirely our fault, I guess, though. I mean, we hear the soothing voice of our state broadcaster tell us that this bill is going through the Senate that will defend diversity, that will defend peace, that will defend hope and love, and the soothing voice just talks to you, and you sit there and sip your super pumpkin chai cinnamon half soy milk latte and sink into the seat of your Uber, getting ready to start another nine to five at the office and think, sounds fine to me, more peace and diversity, why not? A-OK. -okay. Who needs free speech anyways? The government likes me. I don't say anything offensive. The only people who want free speech are people that are offensive. This is what a lot of people actually think. And to the person who is comfortable with this encroachment on their liberties, I would say, what happens when the government comes for your rights? What happens when people find your words offensive? What happens when you become the nasty person? Right now, I get called nasty an awful lot. I get called a Nazi. In fact, I was just uh, in the, the, the store by my house, and I, I picked up this. That was pretty good. <laughs> At least they chose a cute photo of me. Um, and you know what? I do use strong language. I am offensive. I do say mean things, and I say things that people do not want to hear. In fact, last year, I started an entire holiday around it called The Triggering, where people say the nastiest things possible online in defense of free speech. And to that, to defend that, I will take a quote from the famous abolitionist, William Lloyd Garrison. I am aware that many object to the severity of my language, but is there not a cause for severity? I will be as harsh as truth and as uncompromising as justice. On this subject, I do not wish to think or to speak or to write with moderation. No, tell a man whose house is on fire to give a moderate alarm. Tell him to moderately rescue his wife from the hands of the ravisher. Tell the mother to gradually extricate her babe from the fire into which it has fallen. But urge me not to use moderation in a cause like the present. I am in earnest. I will not equivocate. I will not excuse. I will not retreat a single inch, and I will be heard. And despite the difference of context, I stand by the severity of that message, because there is little more important in this world than free speech. Because free speech is the mechanism that we express our ideas. It's the mechanism that we argue for abolition with, that we argue for peace, that we express love and compassion with, that we express condemnation of evil with. It is something that our ancestors fought for with blood, sweat, and tears. Something people have died for. 
whether it be the brave men questioning the Catholic Church before Luther that were burnt, hung, or drowned, or recently, those who have died for the crime of publishing a comic of Muhammad. Let us not be the generation that give up this valuable freedom, and let us forever stand vigilant in defense of it. Thank you.